Amen. Amen. Truly, we thank God for being here today. Amen. Amen. We just thank you. We praise you. Lord God, saints, we ought to praise him and thank the Lord that we're still on this side. On this side of the land of the living. Amen. And truly, I give honor, praises, because I know him. Because I know who Jesus is. And because that he's in me and I am in him. Amen. Truly, I thank the Lord. Amen. Brief announcements. All that can, all that will. Amen. We have prayer on Monday nights from 7 to 7.30. Amen. And we go into a word of prayer. Amen. Wherever you may be. From 7 to 7.30. Amen. We're just all on one accord. Praising the Lord. Lifting him up. Amen. And, and we fast every fourth Wednesday. Amen. From 5 p.m. Amen. Until 5 a.m. Amen. All they can. Amen. Want to grow closer to the Lord. Want to grow closer. Amen. And how you do that is through and by fasting and prayer. Amen. Today I want to work on becoming a new creature. Amen. Becoming a new creature in Christ. Becoming a new creature in Christ. Saints, I thank God for my deliverance. I thank him today. I thank him for my deliverance. Amen. But I've heard a lot of folks talk about how they've been delivered. They talk about how they've been delivered. But they keep doing the same old thing. But they say they've been delivered. But they keep doing the same old things. I've even heard them testify how they've been delivered. But they're still doing that same old thing. That same old thing. Listen, saints. When one has truly been delivered, when one has truly been delivered, their lifestyle will change. Their lifestyle will change. If you've been delivered, you're not going to continue to do the same things you was doing when you was in the world. If you've truly been delivered. If you've truly been delivered. When one is truly delivered, he has been made free. Amen. He has been made free. Your lifestyle has to change. Let's go to Jeremiah. Let's go through the scripture. And I want y'all to walk with me through the scripture. Amen. Teaching. Teaching is necessary today. People have all these beliefs. Believe what they believe. All of these things that's going against God because of what they've been taught. But then when you take a look at it, you pick up the Bible, the book of scriptures here, and you realize what mom and daddy and what the pastor and the bishop has been teaching you all these years, you cannot read. Amen. That's why the Apostle Paul, Peter said, save yourself from this untoward generation. Yeah, we come here every Sunday and Wednesdays. You need to be trying to save yourself. We ain't worried about my wife, not worried about, you don't worry about your husbands, your, your, your sisters, your brothers, your children. You come here to save yourself. Let's go to Jeremiah. I want Jeremiah. 17 chapter, 7 chapter. Jeremiah, 7 chapter. Well, I'm walking with me. Ninth verse. That's where we're going to start. Jeremiah. Seven chapter, <clears throat> and at the ninth verse, 
We're talking about becoming a new creature. A new creature. Listen to what it says here. Jeremiah 7 and 9. It says, Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery? Listen how, listen how the prophet said. Will you do all these things? Will you steal? Will you murder and commit adultery? And swear falsely? And burn incense to Baal? And walk out the other gods whom ye know not? Listen to what it says here in 10. And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name. Do you hear what the prophet is saying? He said, will you steal? Will you murder? Will you commit adultery? Amen. Swear falsely. Burn incense to Baal. And then you come, the Lord said. Then you will come in my house. You'll stand before me in my house. Listen to what it said. Which is called by my name. He said, you'll come, you'll do all of these things that's against me. Then you'll come and stand in the house of God that is called by my name. Listen to what it said. And then say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. When you steal, you murder, you're doing all of these things, committing adultery, uh, 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 all of these things, following out the other gods. But then you will come into his house, the house that's called by his name. Then the Bible say that you will say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Listen to what verse 11 says. Is this house, listen now, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Huh? Now you want to come in God's house, you want to do all of these things, all of these things that God is, that's against God. He says, if this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? He said, behold, even I, have seen it, said the Lord. Lord said he seen it. Amen. You want to live any old kind of way, then you want to come into the house of God and you just want God to accept your lifestyle, the way that you're living. And all along, the way that you're living goes against his word. But then you want to say that you are of God. Amen. Need some teaching. Then they want to say they're of God. Glory to God. It is not so. I'm going to take my time. I want you to follow me in the scripture. We're talking about becoming a new creature in Christ Jesus. A new creature. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Let's go there. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.17. 17. Amen. The word of God is good. The word of God don't change for nobody. That's what I like. What I love about this word here is that man can't change it. Oh, Lord, they cannot change it. No matter how hard they try, they cannot change that what is written. Amen. Amen. The word, we just got to obey the word. The word is not going to conform to your lifestyle. Amen. You just have to conform to the word. And this word is true. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible lets us know if any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. A new creature. Thank God I've been delivered. All of those old things I used to do, I don't do no more. Amen. I'm because I'm a new creature. I used to go to the clubs. I used to party. But I don't go to the clubs and I don't party no more. Why? Because I'm a new creature. 
I used to drink. But I don't drink no more. Why? Because I'm a new creature. Amen. Used to hang out all night. I don't do that no more. Why? Because I'm a new creature. Glory to God. What would be new about me if I was still doing the same thing? Amen. Go to these churches where all they, they tell you, oh, everything is going to be all right. You just live in any old kind of way, but everything is going to be all right. Not so. Glory to God. Not so. Listen to what it says here. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man, that got everybody there. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You see that? He is a new creature. The Bible said, old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. The club hopping I used to do, it done passed away. The drinking I used to do, it done passed away. All of these things have passed away. Why? Because I've become a new creature in Christ. Listen to what it says in there. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things become new. 18 says, and all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. When one becomes in Christ, he's a new creature. The desires I used to have don't have no more. Amen. Because I am a new creature. Amen. Old things have to be done away with, saints. You come this way, you walk this walk. Amen. This is the straight and narrow. This is the straight and narrow now. And the Bible lets us know only a few, only a few is going to find it. This is not that broad path, that broad way. You know, you got 200 people at the, at the church over here. Oh, man, the, 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 the music is wonderful. Oh, man, they can sing. They can do, I mean, it, it, it'll make you cry. Huh? But what is the preacher preaching? They're doing everything that's against God. Oh, yes, the music sounds good. But you got the homosexual on the keyboard. Oh, yes, the singing sounds good. Amen. The choir director, he prancing around. Amen. But the music sounds good. But what is they preaching? And the preacher won't say nothing. Why? Because they don't open up their checkbook. They can sit right in the front row, hugged up amongst each other, and the preacher won't say nothing. Glory to God. But not here. That foolishness can't go on in God's house. Order is in God's house. You can't come in God's house and do what you want to do. Amen. Can't just do what you want to do in God's house. And it don't matter who don't like it. When you become a new creature, all of those old things are passed away. Amen. Let's go to Mark 9, 43. Because the Bible going to let us know if your hand offend you, cut it off. If your hand offend you, cut it off. Let's go to Mark 9, 43. Stay with me now. Mark 9, 43. Let's start there. Mark 9, 43. It's going to let you know if your hand offends you, cut it off. It don't mean literally cut off your hands. But if you have got something that offended you that bad, that's going against this walk with Christ, 
ain't doing nothing for you spiritually, the Bible says, cut it off. Listen to what the word says here now. Mark 9, 43. Listen to what it said. And if thy hand offend thee, the Bible said, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life main than to have it two hands to go into hell. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Do you hear the word? The Bible said, if thy hand offend thee, you got something so close to you, amen, that, that, that's offensive to you, that, 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 that's, that's keeping you from growing spiritually. The Bible says, cut it off. And it don't matter what it is. Amen. The Bible says, it's better to, for thee to enter into life, man. It is better for you to enter into life with one hand. Listen to what it says. Then having two hands to go into hell. Well, I still got both of my hands. Yeah, but you're on your way to hell. Amen. If that thing that's offensive to you spiritually, cut it off. Listen to what it says in 44. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. That worm that's in the fire, that's you. That's the human family. Where the worm dieth not, and that fire is not quenched, that's hell's fire. And that worm that's tossed in hell's fire is you. That's the human family. Amen. So if something that's offensive to you spiritually, cut it off. It means you no good. Cut it off. You see you in error, stop doing it. Cut it off. Amen. It is better to enter into life main than having two hands to go into hell's fire that never shall be quenched. Where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Listen to 45. For if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter hard into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. That's hell fire. And it shall never be quenched. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. You're just going to burn and burn and burn. Amen. And I've heard uh, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses believe that there is no hell. Glory to God. When you hear people start talking like that, let me give you a chapter and verse. You might want to hear nothing about their feelings how they feel about a thing. God wouldn't do this. God wouldn't do such a thing. God wouldn't do that. They don't know the Bible. Glory to God. They don't know the Bible. You're on your way to hell. Show us the world. If you don't obey this word here. Amen. We're talking about becoming a new creature in Christ. Those old things are passed away. Glory to God. Let's go to Romans. Sixth chapter. Not going to be before you long, but I want to do some teaching. Amen. Romans. Go to Romans 6 chapter. And we're going to start around about the fifth verse. Paul said it this way. That old man is crucified with him. What is Paul talking about? That nature that you inherited from Adam. The Bible said death reigned from Adam to Moses. That sinful nature that we inherited, that lustful desire, when we come to Christ, we got to let that go. Those lustful desires that we inherited from our first father, Adam, we have to let that go. That's what the Bible says. That's not. We are the people of God are not sinners. We're not out seeking sin. No, not as the people of God. We're not out seeking sin. We're not out uh, serving sin. Amen. Children of God is not on the dance floor. Do you hear me? <laughs> the children of God is not out on the dance floor. 
Glory to God. Huh? The children of God is not out using profanity. Amen. Not when, not when you become a new creature. Huh? Not when you become a new creature now. What happened? Your appetite doesn't change. Your appetite has changed. When you become a new creature, you don't want to go on the dance floor. Amen. You're not using profanity. We're not out drinking and smoking when you become a new creature. We're not out fornicating or living in adultery when you become a new creature. That's what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. What? Your appetite has changed. You have to change your life. Romans 6, 5. Listen to what it says here now. Romans 6, 5. And it says, 